the last video for the chapter functions. Uh, we have some kinds of uh, special types of functions that are remaining and then we are going to study some of the graphical transformations. So let's start. The first type of function that is we are going to study today is inverse of function. How to find an inverse? This is a very important property. How to find an inverse of a function or inverse function? So let's say that there is a function f which is defined from a to b that is a is its domain and b is its codomain. Okay. Now we are what we are taking that we are saying that b is a bijective function. What do we mean by bijective? By bijective we mean that the function is one one and on two. One it is one one as well as it is an on two function. So if f is a function that belongs from a to b and if f is a 1 1 on 2 function then there exists a unique function g such that g belongs from b to a and now if f of x is y then g of y will be x that means we have interchanged y and x so if your function is let's suppose that if your function is y is equals to log 10x log 10x then your function now becomes x is equal to log 10y this is this is what has happened that your x and y have changed it may not it may not be the case that they change according to this formula but they have changed now what do we mean by that suppose that the function f it is defined from a to b like this now obviously this function is 1 1 and it is pawn to as well now if we are going to define what is f inverse of g then f inverse or the g function will be defined from b to a and look here when a and 1 were forming ordered pair now 1 and a are forming ordered pair similarly b is mapping with 2 so 2 is mapping with b c is mapping with 3 so 3 is mapping with c now what has happened is that the domain of f domain of f has now become codomain or range of g and similarly range of f has now become domain of g that is what has happened this is this here is domain of f now this has become its range this here is range of f now this has become domain so remember that all those functions who are invertible or whose inverse is possible they have to be 1 1 on 2 if the function is 1 1 on 2 then only the inverse is possible let's say that for example we take a function uh, and uh, we are going to find out its inverse how to find the inverse of a function so let's say that we have a function y is equal to 10 to the power x plus 1. Now what we have, what is desired, the desired is that we need to find x in terms of y. Here y is in there in terms of x. We want to find x in terms of y. So let's take the anti log log 10y is equal to x plus 1. Okay. And x becomes log 10y minus 1. Obviously this is an exponential function, so it is a normal function and this is the way of finding the inverse ok now what are the steps express express y in terms of x and the last step is this now if we have reached here now we have find out x in terms of y now interchange x and y so the inverse of this function will become y is equal to log 10x minus 1 this is the inverse function of this function so what are the steps express the y in terms of x and then interchange x and y so these are the this is the method to find out inverse of any function remember that that function has to be 1 1 on 2 ok now let's move now let's talk about what is a periodic function. A periodic function of one a function has said to be a periodic function 
in which there exists a t, a positive t, such that f of x plus t is f of x for all x that are in its domain. So what I am saying that if t is greater than zero, then there has to, if there exists a t which is greater than zero, such that f of x plus t is f x for all x that belongs in domain. Now what do we mean by that? Let's say a sin x function. Suppose I take sin x. Okay. Now if I say that sin of x plus 2 pi, that means what? Look, suppose this is our sin x. Now addition of 2 pi will lead us to here. You can see that both the values are same. Similar thing happens with any of these points. Similar thing happens with all of these points. Okay, so that means that there exists a t which is 2 pi such that sine of x plus 2 pi is always equals to sine x. That means 2 pi is the period of sin x. So we have to express our function in this form and this t will be our period. Now for example if I want to find out the period of sin 2x then what will happen? We know that the period of sin x is we know that the period of when x is there the period is 2 pi. So when 2x is there the period becomes 2 pi by 2. Okay. When x is there, the period will become 2 pi by 2. Suppose, now suppose that if you want, if you desire to find out the period of this, so now cos x also had period 2 pi similar to the sin x. Now, a very easy method to find the period is the graphical method. Draw its graph and then you can straight away say that okay, what is its period. Now, for example, let's say cos x. Cos x is the period 2 pi again. If I want the period of cos, 3x by 2, then simply multiply 2 pi with 2 by 3. Whatever is the coefficient, multiply with one of its by 1 by of its coefficient. For example, if you want to find the period of sin ax, the period of sin ax will be 2 pi by a. That's it. That's it. Why? Because now this answer comes from graph. This is the graph of sin x. If I want to draw the graph of sin 2x, then what happens is that sin 2x completes in cycle within this, within 0 to pi. Similarly, sin 2x will complete its cycle within 0 to pi. And similar thing happens. So that means now when 2x is there, this is its period. After this period is going to repeat its values again and again. So, Thinking on graphic in the graphical sense is always going to help you. Now let's say that we have now but this property A property that 2 pi by A it is valid only for trigonometric and some other functions. Now for example, let's say that we take the function which is sin of x. Sorry, yeah, uh, not sin of x, um, this is fractional part of x. That is x minus greatest integers. Now by this graph we can see that the period of this greatest integer x is 1 because after then after each and then by after my one unit it is going to repeat its value. So it is going like this, then when one comes it again starts repeating its values. So if I'm saying that the period for this greatest integer function is 1. That means greatest integer x plus 1 is obviously greatest integer x. Okay? Now this, this property of 1 by x again comes handy here. If I want to find out the period of 2x, then the period of 2x will become 1 by 2. Similarly, because this has period 1, period of 3x will become 1 by 3. So, 
this is about the periodic function. This is its explanation and how to find the periodic function. You need to express it in this form. If you are able to express the function in this form, then you will be able to simply say that okay, this is the period. Now the last topic of this part is graphical transformation. So let's say that we have a graph of any curve, but there are various operations that can be performed on that graph, or there are various operations which can be performed on that function. And depending upon those operations, the graph will change. Let's see how. So let's suppose that we have y equal to f x, and this is our graph of y equal to f. Okay. This is our graph of y equal to f x. Now, what happens is that as of now, this is my origin. Suppose I want to shift my origin to some alpha comma beta. If I want to shift my origin to some alpha comma beta, then my graph, all these graphs, will transform as it is to this alpha comma beta. Now, this alpha comma beta will now become my origin. And my graph will continue from here. It will acquire to have the same shape. It will continue from here. It will be like this. That means the whole graph has been shifted from this zero comma zero to the alpha comma beta. Now, what has changes? What are the changes that are occurred in the in function? Look, because we have added to the graph in beta, so we have to subtract it from the function. Similarly, we have added a value alpha to all the values, so we have to subtract it from the function. We have created. We have done something to the graph. We have to do exactly opposite opposite change to the function, so as to cancel those changes and make the graph have acquire the same shape. So that is what has happened. We have added alpha comma beta to each and every point. Now we have to subtract alpha comma beta from each and every point. So now move on, move on to this function. Y equal to minus of f x. Now we can clearly see that y equal to minus of f x. That means whatever the values of f x we are getting, there is a minus sign ahead of all those values. So whatever the values those were positive, they will become negative, and whatever the negative values were there, they will become positive and so on. So the dotted line was our original graph, and this is our new graph. You can see that whatever the positive values are there, they have now become negative because there is a minus. Now y equal to mod of f x. This is a very Special kind of function. What happens is that whatever the negative values of your graph are there, neglect them. Whatever the negative values of your graph are there, neglect them and take the image of that negative part in x-axis. Why? Because y equal to mod x will always give you a positive output. So negative output is not desired, and whatever the negative output will be there, it will turn into positive. So that is why we have eliminated the negative part, and whatever the negative part was there, we have taken an image of it. Now similarly, y equal to f of mod x. Now this graph and this graph are different. Here modulus is applied on x. That means the values of x are always positive. Even on this side, the values of x are positive. So what we need to do is that take the graph which is on the positive x-axis side. Take the graph which is on the positive x-axis side. Now, because negative x, because if you include negative x, it is again going to become positive. So, draw the graph on positive x-axis side and take its image in y-axis. Because if I put x equal to minus two, let's say this is minus two and this is x equal to two, so they are going to have same values. If this is minus three and if this is three, then they are going to have the same values. You can see, and so we have to. Uh, Apply this thing in graph as well, so that is why we have taken a very image in y-axis. Now the last part is mod y equal to f of x. If the graph is like this, this mod y equal to f of x, that means whatever thing that will come out of it is always positive. Whatever thing that will come out of it is always positive. That means whatever x you are getting, it you are getting it from the positive y only. Whatever x you are getting, you are getting it from the positive y only. So neglect the negative y. Neglect the negative y. Only this part was negative in our graph. So neglect the negative y and take the image of positive y in x-axis. So we have taken an image of positive y in x-axis, positive y in x-axis. Why? Because 
this value was our solution but now because there is a modern y so now this value is also our solution because minus of y with this negative y will also become plus one so this value is also our solution now there are, there is one more special type of function that is if you are writing let's say y equal to x square what about if you want to write x is equal to root y that means inverse of a function so what will happen is that this is y equal to x square and this is x equal to root y so if you have interchanged x and y that means you are going to take the image of image of mirror image of your graph in y axis if you are interchanging x and y that means you need to take the mirror image of your graph in line y equal to x this is line y equal to x this is y equal to x square and this is x equal to root y so if you are trying to write your function in terms of x in y x in terms of y or now this function what will this function become if this is an inverse so interchanging x and y this will become y equal to root x so this is y equal to root x so if you are trying to find the inverse of a function or if you are trying to interchange x and y then you are actually doing nothing but you are taking the mirror image of your graph in y equal to x line so that is it for this chapter we have studied different types of functions we have studied different operations on them and we have studied how the graphs transform uh, for example if you if you like if you want to take an example so that so in order to understand that how to apply all these graphs so let's say that let's say how, let's see how i'm going to transform the graph y equal to x this is my y equal to x y equal to mod x no negative allowed and take its image in positive in x axis okay now y equal to mod x minus 1 that means i am going to pull this point and drag it to one unit downwards so this is it this is mod x minus 1 now y equal to mod of mod x minus 1 that means no negative part allowed negative image in positive side so this is our actual graph okay now suppose if this is the case okay and i want mod y i want this graph mod y is equal to mod x minus and that is what negative is not allowed so i am deleting the negative part negative y is not allowed and take this image of positive y in negative side so this is the graph of mod y is equal to mod x minus one. so i hope that uh, this is a, these are the simple operations you understand that how to apply these operations okay in different functions and different graph and in this way you can transform your graph to whatever way you want to reach so that's it for today um, the chapter is over so when we will we meet next time we are going to start the new chapter thank you for watching bye bye